In the previous session, we looked at some of the choices that you have for helping you automate the application of the Lagrangian dynamics equation for multi-degree of freedom systems. And those choices included um, the use of scripts, functions, or even MATLAB classes. In the final case study that we're going to look at today, we're going to take that automated version of the Lagrangian dynamics and we're going to sort of call it from within a live script. So the final case study that we'll be looking at today is this four degree of freedom robotic manipulator. So once again, let's go to a MATLAB live script and let's start the process of deriving the equations of motion for this particular machine. So let's go to MATLAB. Okay, so this is the, the last live script that we'll be looking at today. And it follows the exact same format and layout uh, that you've seen previously with the spring mass damper and the two degree of freedom uh, robotic manipulator. So rather than sort of uh, walk through uh, each section, um, this time around I'm just going to run it uh, in its entirety from top to bottom. And then once it's done, I'll cherry pick out some of the, the, the features that I just want to quickly comment on. So let me just uh, click on this run all, bot run all button. All right. And it's going to uh, start sort of um, executing the script from, from top to bottom. So in just a moment, um, a Simulink model uh, is going to pop up with, yep, you guessed it, one of those little yellow blocks. All right. So uh, it really is the exact same workflow uh, that we've looked at um, in the previous two case study examples. So this one is clearly just a little bit bigger uh, than the previous two. It's taking uh, just a, a few more moments to do. So let me just sort of uh, take advantage and um, just introduce you to, uh, here it is, here it is. All right, so what you're looking at here is, is our little yellow block. All right, so um, let me just sort of put this on screen and I'll come back to this in just a second. So let me just sort of minimize this and I'll, and I'll bring it up again in, in uh, 20 seconds time. So just scrolling through the script, uh, look, you're gonna see uh, defining a model excuse me, model parameters, things like the geometry, the masses. Uh, we're prepping for some of the inertia matrices, which we know we're going to use. All right. And then step two, um, this is where we start thinking about the physics. And there's a lot more to think about here. All right. It's part one of five. All right. But uh, note again, the use of the live script to sort of capture you know, all of the thought processes, all of the, the sort of intermediate steps uh, that, that uh, you and the students are going through in order to solve this problem. All right, um, here we're on to part two of five, um, defining the rotational velocities, uh, lots of commentary on what we're doing, and then uh, the implementation of this is how we do what we said we, we wanted to do. Yep. As I scroll down, um, yep, we're formulating the kinetic energies, uh, the potential energies, and then we come up to the Lagrangian, yeah, combining the kinetic and potential. <laughs> and uh, look, at it, it's a little bit funny, isn't it? If I sort of um, draw your attention uh, to this list of terms on the right-hand side, just let me sort of scroll down. So this list of terms is the Lagrangian, right? It's got a couple of dozen terms in it, and now we're supposed to uh, be deriving um, uh, uh, computing the derivatives, but we're going to we're going to um, apply the Lagrangian technique, which we've now sort of um, uh, captured in, in a function that, that we've already written. Okay, so uh, we're, we're applying that three-step dance. Uh, the the recipe of the algorithm is inside the function. All right, and now we're simply sort of capturing uh, the outputs uh, of of uh, of that function. Okay, and as we sort of scroll down the script, you might recall that once we've derived the equations, well, we want to automate the process of converting the derived symbolic expressions into a little yellow block. All right. And that's here. And that kind of brings us uh, to where we were uh, 30 seconds ago. And here is our little yellow block. All right. 
So let me just take um, just a moment or two just to sort of uh, orientate you, introduce you to, to this block. The interface uh, has, has changed just very, very slightly. All right, so let me sort of start on the input side. So as, as we have before, uh, some of these inputs will be time invariant, things like the geometry. Some of the inputs will be time varying. All right, so the angular positions of the, of the joints of the machine, the joint velocities, and the f external torques that we apply to each of the joints of this four DOF robotic manipulator. These are all examples of, of system inputs. Now, unlike the previous two examples, rather than output accelerations, what we're going to output instead are the time varying mass, damping, stiffness, gravity, and generalized torque uh, signals or matrices. Okay, so um, this is a slight variant of what we looked at for the previous two, but look, it's it. It, it encapsulates still the mathematic description of the machine. Now let me sort of double click next on this little yellow block just to again give you a feel for the for how the, the scale of the problem has um, has increased dramatically. So as I pan to the right all of these terms that you're seeing flying across the screen these are all of the terms that define um, the the equations of motion, uh, albeit those time varying mass, stiffness, damping matrices. There's a lot of terms, right? This there is a, a lot of terms here. So we've got our little yellow block, all right. So let's now use that little yellow block again within the context of a simulation. So let me open up a Simulink model for you. So here it is. So the Simulink model that you're looking at here is actually a closed loop feedback control system model. Now let me first of all take you to where our little yellow block is. All right. Let me take you inside this system. And one more. And there it is. There she is, folks. Uh, that is our little yellow block. Um, as we've already discussed, uh, the outputs of the little yellow block are our time varying system matrices, our mass, our damping, stiffness, gravity. And then we can take those time varying system matrices and just calculate the corresponding joint accelerations. Yeah? Our theta 1 double dot, our theta 4 double dot. All right? So that's, um, that's where the mathematics of the system um, is in, in this simulation. Let me just um, show you a few other interesting pieces of this model. So if I take you next into the control law subsystem, here we have four individual controllers uh, for each of the four joints uh, that we want to make move in a special way. And we again utilize just that uh, classic um, uh, cascade uh, dual loop sort of structure, the outer positional loop, the inner velocity loop. Yeah. So that's the model. Now let's numerically solve this system uh, by running the simulation. Now you're going to see sort of two, uh, two things to stare at. So you have the, the nice sort of um, cat assembly looking view as the simulation is, um, is propagating in time. And down in the, the lower left hand corner, you've got uh, this XY plot. So imagine um, a 30,000 foot bird's eye view uh, looking down on the machine. And that, um, that blue trace uh, that is appearing in the XY plot, that is the tip of the end effector, the, the very, very tip of that, um, that orange colored link. So it's just sort of swinging from from one quadrant to the next and now it's going to start doing something interesting. And there's a little bit of a time a time difference, a delay between the CAD um, view and and the XY plot view. And there it is. You can sort of see the machine is um, it's it's writing hello. Um, this is a uh, literally a, a hello world model. All right. 
So the trajectory that the, the, the sort of uh, end effector is traced is this three-dimensional three motion profile um, where the end effector is traced out hello. Uh, 